I'm Robert Sumwalt. I'm the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. And joining us today, my colleague on the board, member Jennifer Homendy, and the investigator in charge for this accident, Roger Evans. Since the beginning of this event on Thursday afternoon, people have been referring to this as an overpressure situation and the NTSB can confirm at this time that this was indeed an overpressure situation. By way of background, gas is supposed to flow to their customers at about one half PSI. We believe that the gas did indeed flow in, into homes at significantly greater flow rates and pressure. The real question for this investigation is to answer why this occurred. Yesterday I mentioned that there were 14 regulators in this area, in these neighborhoods. 14 regulators, they are located under, in underground vaults. And let me tell you what we found today regarding one regulator, which is located at Winthrop and South Union Streets. We found that pressure sensors were connected to a pipe that was being taken out of service on Thursday. So let me explain the regulator. Basically, there's an underground regulator, and truthfully, it's two regulators, a primary and a backup. I'll just refer to it as the regulator. Natural gas flows into one side of the regulator at about 75 PSI. By the time it goes through the regulator, it's supposed to come out at one half PSI. A low gas pressure situation is not a good situation. A low, low pressure is not a good situation for, for a gas utility company because if it gets too low, you lose service to the customers. Pilot lights go out, and it is quite an effort to go around and relight hundreds if not thousands of pilot lights. So that's a situation they don't want to occur. So there are, temperature, there are pressure sensors, flow sensors, that monitor the downstream pressure and flow rate from these regulators. If the flow rate and pressure get too low, it will signal to the regulator to open up the valve to allow more flow. It is like the thermostat in your home for heating. If the temperature sensor senses that the temperature is too cold, what does it do? It sends a signal to turn on the heat. And that's what happens here. If the system senses that the pressure or the flow rate is too low, it sends a signal to open up the regulator to allow more, a higher pressure and greater flow rate. We found evidence from an evidentiary dig this morning that pressure sensors that were attached to a gas line were actually attached to a gas line that was being capped off and taken out of service on Thursday. So let me repeat that. We found evidence from an evidentiary dig this morning that pressure sensors were attached to a gas line that was being placed out of service and being capped off on Thursday. Certainly the investigation will answer two questions. What effect, if any, did this have on the overpressure situation? And secondly, why was this sensor connected to a gas line that was being placed out of service. Just for your information, the regulator that's in the ground is located at South Union and Winthrop Street, Winthrop Street. There was a construction site where they were capping off this pressure line about seven blocks away 
at South Union and Salem Streets. So that's one thing that we've done today. Among other things, we've been conducting interviews for the last two days. Yesterday and today, we've interviewed various personnel from the fire services, from, from the three communities involved. We've interviewed construction crews from the South Union and Salem Street construction site. In the coming days, we will interview the construction foreman in charge of the job at South Union and Salem. We will interview the Columbia Gas Inspector who oversees this construction crew. We will interview the Columbia Gas Pipeline Safety, excuse me, the Columbia Gas Pipeline Safety Supervisor. And we will interview the four people from the Gas Control Center that I mentioned yesterday that is in Columbus, Ohio. We are also in the process of obtaining complete records and logs from the Gas Control Center in Columbus to, to find out exactly what the indications may have been. Now in general terms, the increased pressure occurred right after four o'clock on Thursday. The system is showing right now, our preliminary time hack on that is at 4.04 Thursday afternoon, and it slowly decreased to zero by about 8 p.m. During the course of our investigation, we will nail down those exact times. We are certainly interested in understanding why some homes exploded while others did not. And as a part of our investigation, the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities is conducting an inventory of the houses in the area. They will be looking at the type of appliances and the age of appliances. These are items that use gas in a home, things like a furnace, a stove, an oven, a hot water heater. We will want to know whether or not these systems had a pilot light or whether they had electronic ignition systems. And we will, of course, want to see if there's any correlation between these data points and the explosions. And I certainly want to thank the state for they're doing this tedious but very important work. Now many of you will want to know if it's safe to return to your homes. We are certainly understanding of those concerns and honestly we are sympathetic to those concerns. As I believe I explained yesterday, the NTSB's role in this investigation is, is limited. We are here to examine the specific events that occurred on Thursday and the events that may have occurred prior to that event leading up to the event. But going beyond investigating this specific event is outside of our scope. As I mentioned yesterday, our investigations for pipeline can take 12 to 24 months, and people demand answers now. We don't have those answers, but we will conduct a very thorough investigation. But to be able to answer the larger question is of, of our, is it safe to return to our homes? That overall question, that overall question about the system will be answered by the state who has the regulatory responsibility and authority for this pipeline distribution system, as well as the gas company. I will say this though, if we identify any issues that require immediate action due to an imminent safety concern, we will issue safety recommendations, urgent safety recommendations. This will be our closeout press briefing 
Uh, future information uh, about this investigation will be handled through our media relations office in Washington, D.C. We will be releasing information. Stay tuned to our Twitter handle. Our Twitter handle is at NTSB underscore newsroom or our website, which is NTSB.gov. I want to emphasize that since just because this is our last on-scene press briefing, that does not mean that this investigation is over. In fact, this is just the very beginning of the investigation. This will be very involved, very extensive, but this is our last on-scene press briefing. In just a moment, I'll call for questions. When I do, I'd like for you to raise your hand. When I call on you, please state your name and your affiliation. And um, I'll begin the questions right here. So the question is, how does this event, supposedly Columbia Gas has had a number of events in other states, and how does their number of events compare to others? Uh, that is something that our investigation will indeed examine. Right now our focus has been to be boots on the ground. As I mentioned yesterday, we are here to collect the perishable evidence, the information that goes away with the passage of time. We can go back and determine their safety record later down the road, but our immediate priority is to collect that perishable evidence. There's a follow-up. Yes, can we elaborate on the perishable evidence that, we, uh, that we've been able to do over the last few days? Indeed, uh, doing this uh, expeditionary dig today is an example. We wanted to get in and look at these pipes and see what they look like, see what these sensors look like. We feel that interviews are perishable uh, evidence, perishable information. People's minds change with the passage of, passage of time. We want to get out and interview people as quickly as we reasonably can. So that's some evidence, that's some indications right there of, of perishable evidence. We can get training records, we can get information from the gas control center, we can get those records later, although we are collecting that information now. Any questions over here? The question right here. Yeah, so can I say what the pressure is uh, going flowing into those homes? And so uh, what we can say, because based on what we know, is remember that the pressure goes into the regulator at 75 PSI. If this valve was opened up, if the regulator valve was opened up completely, the pressure would have flowed out at 75 PSI. However, there is uh, because of the length of the pipeline and, and nicks, nooks and crannies in the pipeline, uh, the pressure decreases the further away you get from the regulator. What we can say right now is that it does exit the regulator at 75 PSI. What it entered at some house way downstream, we don't know that right now. Any other questions? There's a question here. Mark, your question, all this noise around here drives me nuts, but it's, it is what it is. Can you come over here? How much of a factor would that play for you? How much, I think the question is, how much would this construction work to cut off, to cap off that that line, how much could that play in this, uh, in this event? Is that what your question is? And certainly that's what we intend to find out. If you have a pressure, if you have a pipeline that's capped on both both ends, how much flow do you have? Maybe not a lot. So the pressure sensor is going to say, not a lot of flow, and go back and open up the regulator. That's what we need to actually find out. We want to find out, was there a relationship between the construction on Thursday afternoon and this event? Any other questions? One last. When you're talking about the construction, are you talking about Columbia Gas working on its own line? Yeah, when we talk about construction, are we talking about Columbia Gas working on their own lines 
The answer to that is yes, they were using contractors to do that work, but it was Columbia Gas Construction, and as you probably know, they're in the process of replacing old cast iron pipe with new plastic pipe. So yes, the construction was done um, at the request of Columbia Gas. Again, we want to thank you all for covering this important story. Our sympathies go to those who've been affected.